inimitable James Stewart. Thank you, James. Um, I'd like to uh, welcome to the stage um, someone who goes back a long ways with Jane, Mr. Bernie Fiedler of the Riverboat fan. As I told you at the start of the evening, uh, Bernie hired uh, Jane. Basically, he was he was desperate for a dishwasher, and Jane overheard that he was looking for a dishwasher. Said, "Well, I'll do it." And from that, she became second waitress, then head waitress, and then Bernie made her general manager. Here's Mr. Bernie Fieber. Thank you, Steve. My dear. First of all. I never hired Jane as a dishwasher. <laughs> well, that's what she says, Bernie. Okay, I don't think so. <laughs> you wash dishes there because. <laughs> yeah. But I just want to say there's something tonight that is so insane. This is the most beautiful feeling I found in years. Oh, yeah. There's so much love in this room. Yeah. It is absolutely crazy. I just turned 80. And now I'm not, I, I'm, that's, that's what I am. And I remember having Brent Titcombe playing my club with the three of the crowd. And to see his son, Liam, tonight, he's brilliant. Jordan, his daughter. She's brilliant. Ian Thomas, his brother. I gotta tell you something. There's something missing in this country. Tonight should have been videotaped, televised on CBC. Because they don't know what they're doing because we have the biggest talent in this country. Yeah. Well, I don't always agree with you, but I got a little story to tell you about Jane because this is the evening about Jane. Jane's worked for me in the 60s. For, she actually managed the club because I was getting too lazy. And deciding in the management and what have you, but Jane and I, Jane, if, I, if you don't mind, I'm going to tell a couple of anecdotes. There was one night Jane said to me, God, I heard this Apple album uh, with a guy by the name of James Taylor. I wish we would get this guy. So I actually went to New York with a bunch of friends, and I hired James Taylor off the stage at the bitter end. And I said, I would love you to come and play, and I know Peter Asher, the manager at the time, uh, and so James came and played to, to, to play We. This place here has artists playing one night only. The Riverboat, we played them for a week. We, we never made any money because some people made, made a lot of money for us, some people lost a lot of money. I used to hire Sonny Terry and Brian McGee twice a year for at least three or four weeks. And they're the ones that kept us in the balance of financial. So without, you know. So coming back to James Taylor and Dan and, and, and Janie. So the opening night of James Taylor, who I thought had a brilliant album. Can you imagine a guy who was the first guy to be signed by the Beatles, the, their record company, to be James Taylor? And I love that album. I just died for it. Yeah. So I hired him and he came to play. And the first night of the evening, I think there were three people there. <laughs> there was myself, there was Jane Harbury, and there was James Taylor. Really <laughs> got This was the honest truth. This was, this was the opening night. Okay? Wow. Luckily, word got around, sped around, and by the end of the, the week, we had Lana thrown the block because he was that talented and he certainly deserved it. 
Do you remember that, Jane? Yeah. I remember, I remember Tim Hart. I don't know whether any of you even know Tim Hart. Uh -huh. Tim Hart was a dear friend of Jane's, too, because I think, Jane, you actually lived with him for a while. Uh, <laughs> no, but it, that's okay. That's okay. I hired Tim Martin, and for those of you that are younger than I am, he wrote some of the most beautiful songs, Don't Make Promises You Can Keep, If I Were a Carpenter, and all of these great songs. He was a heroin addict. And for me to hire Tim Harden, there was a clause in the contract, and I said, he'd have to stay with me and stay at my house. Otherwise, I would lose him to, okay? So, he slept on the couch, and I slept in my bedroom, and one night, I, I, it, it's as clear as bell, I hear, we were living on Alexander Street, which is around Concrete Tower, and I hear this incredible thump, 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 and I said, Jesus. So I go outside, and there's Tim on my kitchen floor. And if anybody, I think everybody knows what a mace is. It's one of those round balls with the spikes on it, and the chain, and the handle. He tried to actually crack, nut, crack nuts on my kitchen floor. OK? And this is it. I mean, seriously. And Tim Harden. To my mind, was one of the most brilliant songwriters I've ever met. And Tim was unfortunately uh, uh, died much too early, and he would have given us so much more. So sort of, sort of John that and all that. I don't have to go into that. I want to come back to Janie. Uh, Janie, I'm sure you had some wonderful uh, stories to tell about uh, Tim Martin and, and you, wherever. That wasn't the stage you lived with. <laughs> but it's, it's all true. It's just, just, that's just the way it is. I'm delighted to see that Tom Rush, uh, yeah, and Tom Paxton, these are all the people. But the thing is, it's such a great feeling in the night. Yes, it is. You know, I have been. I have had people here tonight that I hadn't seen for years. Okay? And and it's just it's Jenny's night. And again, I wish this would be would have been televised because that's what the world in Canada or Canada should be all about because we have the best talent that exists here, okay? Thank you very much. Can I take another half an hour? <laughs> okay, we're going to...